Hello my small fat adapted family and welcome back to the Keto Kitchen. Now I pride myself on my ability to make the best fat head pizza. I have converted almond flour haters into almond flour fat head lovers with my magical techniques and tweaks to the fat head recipe. Today, I'm going to be breaking the magician's code to show you how to make the best, most delicious fathead pizza you will ever have. Really quickly before we get started, only 12% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the Keto Kitchen YouTube channel, so be sure to click that big red subscribe button below this video. It is free, you can change your mind at any time and it will help keep you connected and notify you as to when I upload. It also helps me be able to continue giving you this content for free. Thank you, let's get back to business. If you really want your fathead pizza to be as magical as I'm explaining it, you need to make sure that you follow my instructions and use the ingredients that I give. It has taken about two years of tweaking my weekly fathead pizza to get this gorgeous Domino's pizza replica. Fathead this, fathead that, what is fathead, you might be asking? The term fathead was coined by Tom Norton who had a documentary with the same name. It's a gluten-free keto-friendly dough that is made up predominantly of almond flour, cream cheese, mozzarella, eggs, made into a dough, put in the oven, and it's commonly used as a pizza base for keto folk. But if you tweak it a little bit, add a bit of spice, add a bit of sweetener, you get a really nice sweet dough that you can use as well. My fathead recipe is not actually too dissimilar to the original, but it makes a world of difference. I'm going to be giving you cup measurements as well as gram measurements, but I always, always, always recommend that you use the gram measurements over volumetric measurements like cups, just because it's a lot more accurate and it will give you a better recipe. So for this recipe, you are gonna need 200 grams or one and three quarter cups of shredded mozzarella, 100 grams or one cup of almond flour, one heaped tablespoon of Greek yogurt, coconut flour for dusting, coconut oil, avocado oil, or olive oil for greasing, one tablespoon of tomato paste, two tablespoons of water, and cheese, and toppings and these two ingredients are two that are completely up to you what kind of type you use and the amount you use as well this recipe is actually really simple and can be ready within about 20 minutes so let's just get started i like to start by just preparing any sort of toppings that i have so the first thing we're going to do is create our sort of pizza sauce and to do this we are adding our one tablespoon of tomato paste to a bowl and then we're adding the three tablespoons of water and you're going to give that a good stir i think i just said three tablespoons there sorry i meant two tablespoons of water i worry that any italian watching this will be shuddering at me using tomato paste as a pizza base and then i remember that we're about to be making pizza with almond flour and mozzarella there is a reason that i suggest you make the tomato sauce this way Making a marinara sauce or using a sugar-free tomato sauce with this fathead base is just far too liquidy. It will seep into the base and it will make the whole fathead pizza sloppy. But using tomato paste on its own, which I'm quite happy to do, not only adds a couple of extra carbs, but it's also quite unbearable for a lot of people. They say it's way too tomato-y concentrated in flavour. So we have a sort of middle ground with a mix of tomato paste and water that gives a nice tomato-y taste it's not too thick, it's not too strong, but it's not too liquidy either. So it's not going to destroy the integrity of this fathead pizza. When it comes to the toppings after the tomato paste, it is completely up to you. You just need to make sure that any uncooked ingredients are cooked before you carry on with this recipe. So I have decided to go with some more mozzarella cheese on top of the pizza to give it that real nice stringy taste. I'm just gonna dice up, I've got some sort of wafer thin ham here, I've got these really fatty sticks that we get from Costco that are delicious, and I've got a little bit of sort of rotisserie chicken left over as well. Of course, there's nothing wrong with just a four cheese pizza or just a, a, a what's it called? It's not marigree. It's not marinara. What's it called? Marge? Mar Mar a Marge pizza? It's just like buffalo mozzarella and tomatoes. What is that called? Any excuse to have a fatted pizza, I'm there. Oh, they are tough. 
What is that type of pizza called? A mar it's a mar a mar a marger a margarita a margarita a marger a margarita margarita pizza. There's nothing wrong with a margarita pizza. You don't have to be fancy or add any toppings. Now that our toppings are prepped and set to the side, we're going to start on the actual fat head pizza dough. The method I'm using is for the microwave, but you can also do this over a saucepan on low heat. So you wanna get yourself a microwave safe bowl. I need scales because I'm measuring by grams. We are adding 200 grams of shredded mozzarella. To the 200 grams of mozzarella, we're going to be adding a heaped teaspoon of Greek yogurt. I'm not even gonna mix it in or anything. I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave on high for 30 seconds. After those 30 seconds are up, get it out, give it a stir, pop it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds. We're gonna keep doing this, keep getting it out, stirring it, popping it back in for 30 seconds until we have a fondue-like stringy consistency. Now that we have some nice stringy, creamy mozzarella, we're going to go ahead and add our almond flour. So that's 100 grams of almond flour. At this point, you can go one of two ways. Because it's still quite hot, you can use a big spoon and just start slowly mixing it. Or you can be reckless like I am and just go straight in with your hands, knead it, and then complain it's hot. You do at some point though, if you're using a spoon, want to go into kneading it, just because you want to make sure you stretch it and pull it and use your knuckles and all sorts so that you have a nice uniform dough and you don't have these stringy mozzarella looking bits. If however it goes the other way and it gets too cold to easily move, don't worry about it, just pop it in the microwave for another sort of 10 seconds and then it should be pliable again. Once you have a nice uniform dough that you are happy with, we add coconut flour. I didn't give an exact measurement for this because it kind of really depends on your coconut flour and how sort of coarse it is. But you want to take a nice healthy handful, sprinkle sort of half on the top, turn your dough over, sprinkle sort of half on the bottom. And then you just want to work it again, really work that coconut flour in. And this will give it a grainy, gritty sort of outer texture, which sounds weird. However, it is just like that iconic grainy feeling texture that they have on a Domino's pizza. And that's because they do something quite similar, but they do it with semolina flour, which is not low carb. Don't worry too much about your pizza tasting coconutty or anything. I guarantee you it won't. So that kind of leaves us with this nice floury dough ball. So the next step, once I've washed my hands, is to shape it. Now, unlike the standard fat head dough, we're actually going to fry our pizza base. So you wanna get a standard sized frying pan, take your fat head dough and pop it in the frying pan. And then just use your hands, the palms of your hands, to just start spreading it evenly into your frying pan. I like to flip my dough a few times just to try and get any sort of bumps out without using external tools. After you're happy with your fat head dough, we're just going to remove it from the pan and pop it aside so that we can get the pan ready for frying. I'm just gonna give mine a quick wipe because it's covered in coconut flour. I'm going to put the heat on low. Anything higher than low, it tends to get too brown too quickly or it starts to stick to your pan. So keep it on a nice low heat. Then I'm going to take coconut oil, you can use whatever oil that you're using for greasing and give it a very thin layer of grease. This is just because the mozzarella in this just loves to stick to everything. So the pan will then go on the low heat and I will leave it to warm up for a couple of minutes. It's only been sort of a minute and the pan is warm to touch so it's ready and you just really simply just gonna slide your pizza base into the pan. So we're gonna fry that for about, I'd say about five minutes on a low heat. And we're just gonna check the bottom by lifting it with a spatula every so often to just check for when it goes that sort of nice golden brown underneath. That's when we know it's time to flip it. Now that the underneath is nice and golden, we're just gonna flip it over. I'm just gonna flip it straight onto the board and then pop it back in. You don't need oil in your frying pan for this next bit. So 
So that returns to the heat. Then you're going to preheat your grill, also known as a broiler, to medium high heat. And we're going to add our toppings to the pizza in the pan. The first thing is the tomato sauce. Kind of leave a sort of small space at the edge for your crusts. It should be like just about enough sauce. Then on goes your selected type and amount of cheese. Like I said, I'm just using mozzarella. Then any other toppings that you have pre-prepared. I'm just gonna leave that for a second while I just clean up really quickly. By now, it's already ready to be grilled. I probably should have mentioned to make sure that you have a pan that can go under your grill slash broiler. Most can, but some people use pans with two handles and obviously one of the handles is going to burn and melt in the broiler. It's also worth mentioning that uh, a lot of people say non-stick pans should not go under a grill. However, the Fathead Pizza covers the base of the non-stick and I've never had any issues with it. Pop it in your grill, making sure that the pan handle is away from the grill. If you are worried about your pan, you can always transfer this to a baking sheet before you actually pop it under the grill. We will grill this until the cheese has melted, the toppings have warmed up and the edges, our crust, is going really nice and golden brown. I want to make sure I get a nice even browning so I might get it out a few times and just gently turn it with a spatula and pop it back underneath. The great thing about using a grill is that you can just pull it out and check on it every so often without worrying about it changing the temperature or anything. Our fathead pizza is now out of the grill. It's, oh, it's beautiful. I can hear it just gently sizzling away. It has this gorgeous, deep golden coat to it. All that's left to do is to get it out, cut it into servings and have a try. Providing it's cooked right, it should come out really easily like that. One of the things that makes this pizza so good is that the top has got this real crispy flavour to it, but the underneath, let's see if I can show you here, the underneath is not as aggressively crispy. It's still nice and golden, but it gives it this sort of puffiness that I'm hoping I'll be able to taste. Let's get this thing cut open and have a try because oh, it's just the smell of it is driving me crazy. So I really need a pizza cutter because I make this recipe pretty much every single week. Instead, I'm using a big knife. And what I'm going to do is cut it into eight slices. And a serving is two slices. Now I know there are some of you that are gonna be going, hang on a minute, two slices per person? I could eat a whole takeaway pizza on my own. And I do really sympathize. It was one of the shockers when I first started having fathead pizza that I could only have two slices. However, the reason for that is because it is so incredibly filling and it has pretty high macronutrients, which I will tell you in a second. Let me just get this cut. So two slices of this fathead pizza, not including your chosen cheese and your chosen toppings, comes out to 266 calories, 23 grams of fat, 15 grams of protein, and three net carbs. Let's have a try, shall we? So this fathead pizza has a crunchy exterior that has a slight sort of dusty texture to it. No taste of coconut at all from the coconut flour. It's got a sort of nice dustiness to it. More towards a thick based pizza in that slight chewiness. But to get to that chewiness, you have to get past this nice crispy, fatty outer edge. Then you get, believe it or not, a very, very subtle tomato taste. Then of course you get the flavor of whatever toppings you put on. These little fatty sticks I've used, they burst with fat in your mouth. This is a real dense tasting meal. And this is part of the reason why it's so filling is because yes, it looks thin and yes, it's got crisp to it, but there is a lot of cheese going on in here. Of course, I'm going to be a little bit biased because I absolutely adore the fathead recipe, but my problem with high carb pizza doughs or even some of the low carb alternatives you can get is there's no taste to them. I'm asking you to try this fathead base this way 
even if you have had bad experiences with the fathead dough in the past. Just the dense, beautiful feeling of this fathead dough. It is such a game changer that my high carb auntie, when she comes to visit us, she requests my fathead pizza over a normal pizza because it is just a pocket of deliciousness. But with that being said, that is all for this video. Leave a like if you found it interesting, insightful or helpful. Subscribe for more keto content. Any questions, any comments, any queries, anything down below. Keep calm. Keto on. Thanks for watching.